Okay, let's work through an example um, from section 10.4. Uh, this section is very, very similar um, to 10.2 and 10.3, um, so there's really not much new here. Um, the, really, the only thing new is the formula for the test statistic. Okay, so hopefully this example will be enough to get you through the process here. You can also use learn mode in Inox if you need uh, some extra examples. Okay, so let's look at this one. Um, it says a publisher reports that 79% of their readers own a laptop. Marketing executive wants to test the claim that the percentage is actually less than the reported percentage. So um, here's our reported percentage, 79%. And what we want to know is, is the actual number less than that. So on step one, when we get our, we get our hypotheses, all and our alternative hypothesis. So uh, we don't even have to read on further into the problem for this step. Okay, so we want to know if the, our percentage is less than the reported percentage. So here, percentage is a proportion, so we're dealing with P. We want to know if P is less than the reported percentage, which is 79%, or if we change that to a decimal, that's 0.79. Okay, for this step, it doesn't matter if you write it as a decimal or a percentage, but later on, we'll want it as a decimal because it's easier to use. So. We want to know here if P is less than 0 0.79. That makes our null hypothesis. Remember, it's got to be the opposite and have equality. So P is greater than or equal to 0 0.79. Okay. Then we want to calculate our test statistic. So since we're dealing with proportions, we're going to use Z. And our formula for a Z test statistic with proportions is P hat minus p divided by square root of p times 1 minus p divided by n. Everything down there in the bottom is in the square root. So this number is our p. So we need p hat, our sample proportion. So in our sample, our proportion is 76%. So this is p hat. And then the only other number we need is the sample size. So here we have a sample of 200, so that is n, our sample size. Plugging into our formula, we have p hat, which was 76% or 0.76. Every other p in our formula is going to be 0.79, right? p hat's only in there one. So minus 79 divided by the square root. 0.79 times 1 minus 0.79 divided by 200. Okay, I haven't calculated this yet, so um, the way I put this into my calculator is I'll do 0 0.76 minus 0 0.79, hit equal, and I'm going to divide that, hit the square root of 0.79 times parenthesis 1 minus 0.79 close divided by 200 and then I'm going to close my square root here I get negative 1.04 when we round to two decimal places okay can't remember what what question Hawks asked next, but we'll hit all of them though. Um, so the next thing we need to know is what type of test we're doing. If we look at the alternative hypothesis here, we have a less than symbol that points to the left. So this is a left tailed test. Need to know that. Um, also, the else that's important is that we are looking at the 0 0.2 level, so have a significance level on alpha of 0 0.02. Need that. Um, so our next step down here, we want to find the p-value. Since we're doing a left-tailed test, our p-value is going to be the area to the left. 
of our test statistic, which is negative 1.04. So, go to the Z tables here because we are dealing with a T and with a Z. We want area to the left of negative 1.04, so we're going to just look up negative 1.04 in our Z table. Standard normal table, negative infinity, or Z is negative, so we want negative 1.04. So, negative 1.04. Gives us 0 0.1492. That will be our p value. I already forgot it. My short term memory is not good today. I'm 0 0.1492. Okay. Then we want to make our conclusion. So, how do we draw our conclusion here? We're going to compare our p value. To our significance level. So we're, we want to know if our p value is less than that. So our p value is 0 0.1492. Our alpha significance level was 0 0.02. So here actually our p-value is greater than alpha. So if our p-value is low, we reject the null hypothesis, but here it's not our p-value is greater than alpha. So we fail to reject the null hypothesis. Because our p-value is too big. Too much of a chance of a type 1 error. Fail to reject the null hypothesis. So what does that mean? That means we do not have enough evidence. There is not sufficient evidence to support the claim. Okay. All right, I hope that helps. Um, the only step that's new okay, in this, this section is step two. We're, we're using a different formula to get our z-test statistic, but everything else is just like what we did in 10.2. Okay, let me know if you have questions.